What's up everyone, Laconde Mwila here, back with another video, and we're talking K8s, Istio, and security. In a previous video, I focused on how you can use Istio's ingress gateway and virtual services to expose a single point of entry and route traffic to different microservices in your EKS cluster. And this approach does provide a superior measure of security compared to having multiple points of entry into your cluster. This single ingress gateway allows us to specify details like the port to open up, the network protocol for incoming traffic, and host names for those incoming requests. But we can take it a step further in terms of security. And in this video, I'm going to show you how. Let's talk about securing your ingress gateway by implementing transport layer security, better known as TLS. This is the topic that's likely to get your CISOs and security engineers smiling to some degree. Maybe a smirk. We can secure the gateway by encrypting all the traffic that comes into the Istio service mesh and ensure that the traffic reaching our workload environment is served over HTTPS. And this is useful to mitigate the risks of network request interceptions, commonly known as a man in the middle attack. For example, a fake service can be deployed, pretending to be the intended service that a request was sent to. And if you watched the previous video on using the Istio ingress gateway and virtual services, you'll remember that I deployed a mock e-commerce application that consisted of a GraphQL service, an order service, and a product service. The GraphQL service communicated with an order service and a product service and aggregated that data. And in turn, the order service also communicated with a product service to fetch information on the product details for a specific order. But what if a fake service intercepted the communication between the GraphQL service and the order service? or the order service when it's reaching out to the product service for more details on a product. And that could be really bad, especially given the sensitive information that's likely to be there. Remember, Reed Richards ordered an Avengers t-shirt and we don't want that going to anyone else. Look, the repercussions are obviously more serious than that. So we need to mitigate the risks in the case that something like this happens. And we can do that by generating and providing our gateway with a certificate and a private key signed by a trusted certificate authority. The certificate, which contains a public key, is going to be the identity for our gateway. But how is this all going to work in connection with incoming requests? And that's where TLS comes in. Clients sending requests can verify this public SSL certificate associated with the gateway, which is our server. The clients can then confirm that it's actually signed by a, a trusted certificate authority before proceeding to send what is known as a session key encrypted with the public key within the certificate that the server provided. And this session key is temporary and will be discarded after the session. The gateway, which is our server, will then decrypt the session key using its private key. After that, the session key can then be used for encrypted communication between the client and the server. So these initial steps are a way for the client to confirm that the server is who it says it is. And once confirmed, provide it with a session key that they can use for the rest of the back and forth communication. So the end goal is to have end-to-end -end encryption. I'm going to make some tweaks to my solution from the previous video, and I'll walk you through that in an architecture diagram in my editor, but we will essentially be aiming to have transport layer security added to our solution. So let's check this out. All right, before I get to the code walkthrough, let's talk about the changes that I've made to my solution. You heard me mention right at the end of the previous segment that I'm aiming for end-to-end -end encryption. But what does that actually look like in the context of this architecture and what I was speaking about previously? So in order to secure the transfer of data end to end, I have to, re have to recognize that there are two separate client server interactions for the requests that are coming into the mesh. So the first interaction is between the client initiating the request, whether that's from a browser or curl in the terminal or postman and the load balancer itself. And the second one is between the load balancer and the Istio ingress gateway. And as you can see, the tweaks I've made are the inclusion of an application load balancer in place of the classic load balancer. And this external or internet facing load balancer is no longer the one provisioned by Istio. The ALB is created by the AWS load balancer controller which I've deployed to my cluster. And I'll put a link in the description so you can follow the steps on how to deploy it into your Kubernetes environment. So the ALB resource and its configurations are determined by an ingress resource. And I will show you that when we get to the, the code specifics. So what happens to my Istio ingress gateway? 
uh, service to be specific, the Istio Ingress Gateway service. I patched it with a change to the service type from load balancer to node port. So the general function of the Istio Ingress Gateway service doesn't change. The main difference is that now it's an intermediary component that receives traffic, HTTPS traffic from the external um, application load balancer and proxy that proxies that traffic that it receives to the e-commerce gateway, which will in turn forward the traffic through to our backend services. Now let's talk about this traffic in transit because the whole point is to secure it. I've already mentioned the two points of concern. So let's start by discussing the encryption of the traffic between the initiating client and the application load balancer. To do that, I'm going to generate a public TLS SSL certificate um, in AWS Certificate Manager for my domain, lukemuila.com, and attach that certificate to the application load balancer. And this is the certificate that will act as the identity for the ALB for any client server interactions. So that's the first point of concern. These, the next point of concern in our solution is between the ALB and the Istio Ingress Gateway. And for that, I'm going to generate a self-signed certificate that will be attached to the Istio Ingress Gateway. And you can create a secret, as you can see over here, and add the values for the certificate and the private key to this secret, and then give the Istio Ingress Gateway access to that particular secret. I'll then update the e-commerce gateway to listen for traffic on port 443 instead of port 80. So the rest of the traffic within the service mesh itself will flow the same way that it did before. Now, if you're interested in how the traffic routing works, you can watch my previous video on that very topic. So now let's take a look at the specific Kubernetes resources, the manifest files, that is. And we'll start off by looking at the ingress resource. So as I mentioned, this is the one that specifies the configuration details for my application load balancer. So I'm launching this in the Istio system namespace, and I've detailed some annotations that are fitting for what I want. So you can see I've specified the creation of an ALB, as you can see over here, and the AWS load balancer controller um, allows you to also create network load balancers. So you're not restricted to creating ALBs. In addition, I specify that it should be internet facing. So it will be associated with the public subnets in my VPC where this cluster is launched. Um, that's also why we're using a public TLS SSL certificate for this. Right. Um, another important um, annotation that I've specified over here is that I want us to handle um, HTTPS traffic. That's the backend protocol you can see. And then we're listening on ports 80 and port 443. So that means we can handle traffic on both of these ports, even though we will redirect any traffic coming in from port 80 to 443. Lastly, the most, not the most important, but one, not the most important one, but important nonetheless, um, is the actual attachment of my certificate from ACM. And I just need the certificate ARN, as you can see over here. So this is where you would specify that in that annotation. And if I scroll down, you'll see the configurations for the upstream backend servers for the host lukemuila.com, which in this case is our Istio Ingress gateway. And I specify the status for port health checks, as you can see over here. And so this is uh, this specific one is for is the is the actual status port for the health checks. And this is something that you can have a look at if you were to head over to the Istio Ingress Gateway. And let me come here. And you can see I'm already in the services section. So I'm simply going to describe this one. That's the Istio Ingress Gateway service. And I'm going to scroll down slowly. And we can take a look and you'll see over there the status port for health checks. We head back to the editor. And then, of course, um, last but not least, uh, port 443 for the traffic to be forwarded. And now let's have a look at the changes to the Ingress Gateway resource. OK, so the most important change from last time around is the configurations for the port that we're opening up and the protocol for the network traffic we're expecting to enter the service mesh. And all of that happens over here. You can see it's port 443 and HTTPS respectively. Also, I mentioned earlier that I'd be attaching a self-signed certificate to the Ingress Gateway. And that's something that you can do by first running this particular command, I did this in my terminal, the open SSL command, and you can see specifically for my domain, lukemuila.com. And um, once you've generated that certificate, it will produce um, 
both a private key and the actual public cer certificate. Uh, as you can see, mine were produced in a directory called cert. So just be mindful of that. If you're going to use this exact same command, you don't have to have this prefix over here of a directory. It could be it's arbitrary if you want to name your folder differently for where you want your cert and private key to be stored, or you can completely omit that. So just so you avoid running into any errors in that regard. And then once you've done that, the next step is to create a secret that will actually have its values taken from this generated private key and public certificate. And you can see it's going to be a TLS secret. And just so you're aware, uh, this is not a secure approach for managing secrets in Kubernetes. That is a, a different topic. Um, and I have a video dedicated to how to securely manage your certificates in Kubernetes. So you can definitely watch that. I'll also add that as a link in the description below. And you can optimize everything by following that approach. Uh, but just so we stay on track with the main focus over here, I'm not going to delve into those details. All right. So um, how do we actually reference these values inside of our ingress gateway in Istio. And that's where this property, the TLS uh, property comes in and you'll see specifically under credential name, uh, my secret e-commerce TLS secret matches the secret that is being created over here so that the Istio ingress gateway uses that as its uh, identity. So any interaction taking place between the application load balancer and the Istio ingress gateway um, will make use of that. Great. So um that is just about everything the last thing to do now is to test it out so i'm going to come to postman and as usual i've already run the requests so but just so you can see https over there and i'm going to run the request again and you can see it's working as expected and we have um this was the orders api that we were testing i'm going to do the exact same thing with products just rerun it just so you can see that everything is working as expected and last but not least, our GraphQL microservice. And so I've updated it to GraphQL for the body. And you can see the query over here. And if I execute that, our results are down here. I'm going to collapse this so there's a bit more of a clear, there's a clearer view of it. You can see there the responses are different orders for uh, the different individuals, Peter Parker and his DSLR camera, Steve Rogers and his trainers, et cetera, et cetera. Great. And so that brings things full circle. If I were to test this out in the browser, it would be the exact same result. And if I did an HTTP request in the browser, it would actually redirect to HTTPS. I'm going to actually just grab this. And you can see the lock over there. But what we can do now is drop the S. And you can see it's been redirected to HTTPS. We've still got the lock over there. Great. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you found that useful. If so, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more.